Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're new to this channel, get ready for some awesome glass blowing and extremely cool visual effects. Please like and subscribe because we'd like to see you back again. If you're returning and you've been with us for the whole time, thank you so much. We are here because of you guys and we couldn't do it with all of you guys. So thank you for liking and subscribing to the channel and checking out all of our videos. Make sure you hit that notification button and welcome to the video. Absolutely, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, stoked to get into another demo with y'all. Uh, beforehand, you know, I'm sure you guys have been seeing all the fires we've been hit with recently out here on the West Coast and everybody's been really affected by it, especially a lot of glass blowers directly, including some that we know, Sir Pyro, who you guys can go check out a video with uh, back in the old studio. He did a cool Sherlock, but the studio he was working in, the dojo, uh, owned by Amani Summerday, actually ended up burning down, uh, as did Clinton Romans. So, and I know there's probably many other glass blowers who, you know, may not be big name guys we know. So definitely everybody be helping your friends, you know, reaching out to each other, drop a couple GoFundMe links down there. If you guys are able to donate, you know, I'm sure they'd really appreciate it. Yeah, Kevin and I really want to support and let people know that we're a tight community and anything that you guys can donate uh, will help out. It takes a lot of money to make studios, as I'm sure all you guys know. And anything that you can do to contribute would be awesome for the community. So there's some links below and uh, please go ahead and do that. Absolutely, stay safe everybody. So yeah, um, we want to talk about the online school just for a second. It's going really well. There's been a new video almost every week and so we're going over wig wags and different things in more detail, um, stacking. Um, Kevin is about to put up a video on the online school. It's true, we're gonna do a little uh, check out how to shoot some photos of some glass. I know you guys may wanna you know, post up on Instagram, so we'll uh, check out a little couple setups for that. Should be pretty fun. And we have a few more workshops coming up. They're already been scheduled. Kevin's working on the flyers this week, mm -hmm. so I'll be able to announce those workshops and definitely join us for the workshop. You can watch from anywhere in the world. It's a really great experience. It's super fun, you know, hanging out and chat with everybody, getting live questions for the artists, and of course, you know, watching the artists work for a whole day. Pretty sweet. It's awesome. So we hope we see you guys in the online school. We can be more available for questions and more available for your own journey in glass. So we'd love for you to be a part of that. Totally. And uh, we also wanted to thank our sponsor, as always, Mountain Glass Arts. They uh, have the best selection of tools, color, tubing. They got, you know, hand-pulled tubing, crucible-pulled tubing, line tubing, all kinds of scallop tubing, <laughs> dichroic tubing. I Barbecue mean... <laughs> tubing. <laughs> anyway, Mountain Glass is awesome, and their color selection is incredible. Their tool selection is incredible. So make sure you go and tell them that you saw it in the video. I think they'll give you a little bit of discount. And we really appreciate Mountain Glass continuing to sponsor these videos and having such a broad selection for the glass community. Absolutely. Thanks to Mountain Glass Arts. Cool. Well, let's get in the studio and we're going to make this, which is a very cool hexagonal This is pretty tumbler. sweet. This was a fun one. We just saw the, saw the mold on top of the kiln. We're like, let's give it a shot. Yeah, that's so, it. Let's go check it out. Cool. See you guys in the studio. All right, guys, first thing I'm gonna do is grab some of this tubing. It's called Yoshi, wasn't that what it was called, Kevin? I believe so, yep, and that's from Greasy Glass, yeah. some hand-pulled tubing, and this stuff is super thick. That chunk is, I don't know, 10 mil thick almost? It's, it's thick, for sure, and I got it from a local supplier, and sometimes I go there and I just look at their selection of tubing and just pick out a couple things, so I went there um, the day Actually, this day that we made this, I went there in the morning because I wanted to get some tubing for this specific project. Get a couple nice pieces of color that you see would have some nice, uh, very even tubing for this. Yeah, exactly. And you guys have seen me prep up a bunch of stuff before, but basically what I'm doing is condensing the end down and making a round bottom. And we have to definitely mention that that's Sage, my younger son in the background, next to my girlfriend the cuddle assassin mm -hmm. right there you stop in and see what's going on in the studio and of course uh, you're closing this tubing down and then you'll open it back up to really help center the hole yes i'll i'll close it down round bottom then blow a little hole get that guy open there and this is going to be the lip wrap for the cup yeah exactly it's an encalmo lip wrap open that up with my reamer now I'm gonna connect the blow tube here. Obviously, I know a lot of you guys have seen this before, 
but it's really important that you push and then pull just a little bit. Really get that glass sealed all the way around. Gonna make sure it has a nice, strong connection. And now you're gonna go cut off a little section of this uh, Yoshi, and then you'll be sealing that onto the rest of the body later on. Yeah, and I guess the Yoshi tubing is a CFL color, which means that under the compact fluorescent lighting, versus sunlight, it changes, I believe, from a green to a pink-ish. Yep, yeah, it's gonna be like a, a pinky purple kinda. And those CFL colors are, are super cool, and some of them even you get kind of three colors out of. You get a, a daylight from sunlight, a CFL, and then sometimes like LED lights will make almost a third color. Do you know an example of one that gives you three? Um, I'm try not off the top of my head, um, Joachim Glass has hand-mixed a couple. He'll mm -hmm. like mix Yoshi and um, whatever the blue-green one is. Uh, something like that, mm -hmm. you know, and kind of make different uh, combinations, which is pretty cool that it works out. It's so and it's so interesting and cool that like this is the level of, of colors that we're able to use right now. And I know for a lot of you guys coming into the industry, it's like, I guess maybe taking a little bit for granted because you never really went through a time where like a color like this was actually beyond our wildest imagination. A, 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 a solid opaque pastel green tubing that shifts in light. It's like, wait, we couldn't even get green, <laughs> let, let alone this thing. So it's just kind of cool to be sitting here and, and using these amazing colors after starting with clear glass and cobalt and r red, like ruby mm -hmm, red, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, oh, you wanted some crazy color, get the fume out. Yeah. Because yeah, that's what you needed. And this is when we actually discovered that this isn't a green tube. Or, well, it won't be a green yeah. tube, I guess. Well, I yeah, I went to the store and it, I, I don't know all the colors, especially I don't know all the tubing. Like, people just layer a few colors and call it whatever they want. So, I... It was called Green Energy. I was like, damn, this is a cool emerald color. I think this will go good with that lime lip wrap. And then uh, I started melting it down. I was like, hey, Kevin, uh, this color has silver in it. It's going to definitely shift. Like, it's going to be like amber purple. Totally. And it does very much remind me of uh, amber purple. You guys will be able to see it here in a sec when we get the, the close up when it's not in the flame. And I was like, oh, all right. I, you know, I think it'll still work well. And it turned out to, to look great with the color anyway. Yeah, you know, it was a happy little ass accident, as uh, <laughs> my <laughs> my influencer, Mr. Bob Ross, says. <laughs> so you're just making a round bottom on this tubing as well. This is pretty big around, but not nearly as thick as, that, uh, as the Yoshi. I think, yeah, it's not as thick, but I think it's even a larger diameter. I could see that, definitely. So you're just gonna make that a round bottom and this will be the body of the cup. Yeah, so making a round bottom, popping a hole again. And you can see that that silver striking color is on there. It, I, I guess to me, it, it reminds me of amber purple or like blue moon or something like that. Mm-hmm, totally one of those colors with a lot of metal in them. Mm -hmm. Something like this you could um, do like some cool sandblasting with because that that fume is just on the surface and so you could sandblast away into a transparent green my oh, guess my guess i haven't totally. i haven't done it but that would be my guess that'd be pretty cool i'm gonna have to try it out so now you're gonna pop this in the kiln let that seal get nice and good you know the metallic colors do you know every once in a while tend to be a little pickier with the heat so mm -hmm. let that warm up for 10 minutes and it's good to go and now we're gonna do the same thing here attach a blow tube to the other side and then be able to take this down to two blanks. Right, you don't need this full length for the cup, but you're gonna leave a little more than the final length of your cup to make sure uh, it fits on the mold. Yeah, and also this is the second time I've ever tried this. I mean, I definitely saw this in Italy when, there, when I was visiting some shops and I mean, I bought the mold from the tool maker. I was like, oh, that's cool. It's kind of a simple mold. I'll, I'll pick one up, never know if I'll use it. But um, this is actually the second time I tried it, and you guys will see a glimpse of the first time. Um, oh, the th this is the third time. I was gonna this say, is we, the, you, technically the third time. Uh, very rare. You actually did yeah. a test a test run before we filmed the first time. Uh, just you know, since yeah. never using the mold, I guess you know, see how it works. But like we, but like you guys, I I don't know if I've ever done something first like as a test for an on the torch video <laughs> i mean like i remember drawing jake the dog and the jesus seals and like a lot mm -hmm. of stuff that i i've never some stuff i never even did before and i was just <laughs> like oh I, I understand how this works i'm gonna try it and then it seemed to work out but this one we wanted to test it and we made a few little 
well, two before this one. You'll, you'll, you guys yeah. will see later on what ended up happening there. <laughs> so this is a third time's a charm. Yeah. So we're gonna heat this up in the center, make two blanks, type, separate those, pulling just a little bit, and then I'll be able to put it in my my rollers and break that off. You can see it's condensing some, as you were saying, since you're pulling a little there. And now making sure not, you don't never want to press too hard because that can, can make your opening off center, just kind of lightly rolling. Yeah, like I tend to like put it really light at the beginning and as it cools down, I start to put on more and more pressure. Boom, there we go. I'll pop one of those in the kiln for you for later on. And now you're gonna go close this up and start to shape it. Yeah, it's, glass blowing is all about making these round bottoms, evidently. That's, I mean, it's pretty true, especially with big tubing like this. Yeah. Gotta make sure they're nice and even. Yeah. So I'm gonna heat it up, pop a hole in it, and then get ready to encomo that other section on there. Using your Mirage Flame, pretty, uh, pretty fi uh, high up in power, getting a nice amount of heat in the end there. A little marvering, a little puffing, and now you'll open up that hole for the encolma. Heating it up, attaching or like sticking the clear glass rod to the center, then blowing a little bit, and then putting that back in the flame to clean up any bubble trash or anything that's maybe scuzz that's got on there. Using your jacks to open it up here, making that nice centered hole. And now you can grab that Yoshi and seal them up. All right, just gonna wipe off any excess kiln dust. And now I'm gonna heat them both up. Kiln dust left on the surface can actually like burn in and create like a scuzz mark or air bubbles or something. Yeah, it's it's no good. I'm, one thing I've seen recently is some kiln blankets. I haven't tried one out, but I think they're making a kiln blanket maybe out of Kevlar that minimizes the dust. Oh, interesting. Goes in the kiln on the on the floor. I'm pretty sure. I think hmm. I've seen it at Mountain. I'll ask him to send me one so I can show you guys. That'd be pretty cool. So you're just kind of estimating how much uh, how much Yoshi you'll need for that lip wrap and just use your blade there to cut it off. Just heating it up using the uh, V blade slash rollers. This is made by Firekist Glassworks. I got this on Etsy, by the way, in case you guys are curious. Very nice. And it works, you know, very similar to a V blade, but just can give you a little bit more glide kind of on the glass. Yeah, I think it, it's more more glide as well as more, it's like sharpened in a way mm. that the V blades typically are not. So it, I feel like both of those things, like the rolling and the extra sharpness, give me a lot better control. The kind of sharper edge gets you a nice condension line where you can break it off. Yeah, this is the same way I'll be doing a, a wig wax section or a Tetris, just heating it up and condensing it back. And, and as you guys know, this is, based on my experience with furnace glass, a lot of glass blowers might punny up right now and then have a handle on both sides and then blow that out. Totally, but you know, that's very Italian furnace work style where you have the the hot section out on the end of the of your piece there. And you know, it's like we've, we've talked about before, it's off center when it's hot, right? But as it's all cool, it comes back to center. And Yeah, I think we've talked about Caramea, Caramea before, the Italian glass blower or basically told me that it's it's off center all the time until the moment th that you're finished and you kind of freeze it in place. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's been my philosophy just because that's my heritage of glass blowing. And I know that it's not in alignment with scientific um, theology basically, which is keep it centered all the time, heat it very slow and, and methodically. Like I feel like the Italian style is heat it a lot and have the ability to control it when it's really fucking hot. Get that heat in there, yeah. yeah! So blowing out the center, blowing that hole. And you can see how any that little piece of bubble trash went right up into the ventilation. Always gotta have ventilation that's strong enough for your space. Yeah, I'm, there's some formulas around that and my general rule of thumb is 800-ish CFM as a, at a minimum per station. So if you have a studio with mine, six six stations, I need, you know, approaching 6,000 CFMs of, of ventilation, which, which I have. Um, totally. Yeah. And you know, we don't need to run all of it all the time, right? When you're in, when you're the only one in here working with just one torch, we don't need to be running at, at full 6,000 CFM capacity. 
Yeah, exactly. And you can do a dampering system. You could have individual fans. So there's many different ways to set up the ventilation system. Um, I've seen people use grow fans in line for each station, and then you can turn them on individually. That seems to work. It can be a little bit louder. So what we use is um, updraft ventilators for restaurants, basically. Is mm -hmm. what we're using. Like you'd have in like a, a kitchen, like mm -hmm. a commercial kitchen. Like a commercial kitchen, yep. And these ones are nice because your fan is very quiet, I have to say. It's it's nice it's mounted up on the, the roof, kind of, right? Um, the in, exterior. In my, it's mounted on the back wall. Okay. Because I wanted to have it be discreet because my studio is kind of in a public area. And I feel like having that kind of big exposed industrial thing is... It's just like, we'll make people curious and not understand what's going on and stuff. So totally. I, I built it in a way that was discreet. So now you're pretty much ready to do the forming here. You're getting as much of it hot as possible. Got your big uh, Delta Mag flame on. Yeah, and I'm just going to try to heat up like probably 75% of this tube-ish. And then I'm going to flare it and push it on this mold you can see the mold kind of sticking out there on the bottom of the screen and it's a hex I guess it makes a hex it's really just six fins so you're flaring it a little there at the front and you kind of work your way down flaring it make sure it's nice and even you don't want one spot that's wider or one spot that's a little narrower because that might mess up your walls and one thing I'm noticing right now while I'm I'm making the glass, I noticed this while I was making the glass as well, is that the lip, the lime lip of the Yoshi tubing is much stiffer. The viscosity of that is much different than of the the, the green the emerald green tubing. So I'm gonna have to remember that and make sure that I can heat that lip up as much as the other glass so that it'll move. Otherwise, that lip won't move and the green will move and then I'll get a fold or some weird stuff. Totally lots of stress in there, something no good. Kind of comparing your size there, see if that's enough flared out. And you can see me then now focusing the heat on the front and you can see that the whole lip has changed color from green to orange and that means that it's getting hot. Just gonna make sure there's no um no area where it's a little more condensed than the others. You can see it was a little wavy on the edge, so just evening that all out there. Then I'm going to heat up the front, and then I'm going to use the jacks as well on the outside, which is a furnace technique. So I have the blades about halfway in between close and open, and I'm going back and moving it, my hand so that I catch the wall of the glass, and I, it's a bit like marvering the glass. So heating this up. Getting ready for the big move here. So it's one and done, right? It's uh, only get one chance you to put it on the mold. Shot. And we'll tell you <laughs> why in a second. <laughs> but yeah, it's really a one, the one, one trick, one, one time. So you got all that heat on the front, like you were saying. Make sure that lip is really, really hot. And this is where the Italian comes in, how it comes in handy. Boom. Just push that on there and you can see that really just open up and make that hex. And I can tell you guys, this is a very satisfying feeling. It definitely looks satisfying. Pushing nice and even, making sure your blow tube is centered above the top of that mold. That'll make sure your cup has a nice uh, even lip. Mm -hmm. And there you guys, you can see that hex is just like, looks like it was machined or something, you know? And to have, have these kind of sharp angles on blown glass is, is really just an interesting look because it it goes against kind of the way glass naturally wants to form which is into spheres and and rounded edged things and some of the uh this glass actually got a little bit of stress in it from going into that hexagonal shape you know kind of moving away it's not really used to moving so you're just going in with your torch polishing out any stress there yeah there was just like a little bit of divit because i'm it, i moved it really a lot at once so uh, things that could help with that are maybe maybe a little bit thinner, uh, maybe a little bit hotter. It wasn't that bad. It only took me a couple seconds to get out, but it's something to, to keep in mind. And now you're giving some heat to the lip here because you're going to grab it with your claw gra grabbers, but you wanna don't want to crack it or anything. Yeah, because I'm thinking that this is already under a lot of stress because of those lines in the glass. And so anything that I can do to prevent any additional stress... Uh, I, I think I'm going to try, so I, I put a little heat in there, which is not something I probably would normally do on if I was just making a regular goblet. 
break that off. <laughs> kind <laughs> of. Deci decided it was time that it didn't be on there. Good thing yeah. the grabbers are tight. I think that's what the seal scale is all about. It's just like, you know, timing your punny perfectly so that it just breaks off whenever it's ready. So now I you're think we did that last time in the steamroller, too. I believe so. Sure do. It's, it's, it's time. Demo's yeah. over. Yeah. So now you're just going to go in and be really careful with a soft flame. It, it wanted to crack in from where that blow tube popped off. So just making sure that crack didn't want to spread at all. And now you can go in and close it up. Yeah, exactly. And so now I'm going to grab it with the tweezers or maybe a, a clear rod and close up that hole. And you'll be making a nice round bottom that you're going to flatten out into the bottom of our cup. Yeah, and the difference here is that this is going to be a no blow flat uh, round bottom. So I, I don't have access to inflate this anymore. So what I'm going to do is just try to use the gravity to elongate it and even out the wall thickness that way. And then going elbow down a little bit to condense it back some, really get it nice and round and a little bit thicker for the foot. Yeah, it's always good to keep the foot of drinking wear a little bit thicker because it adds weight and stability to your piece. So heating it up, and I'm condensing this down just a little bit, as we just said, to make it thicker. And we're going to push it on the marver. Holding it vertically for a second to let that glass all center out, and then you can press it in, get that nice, even foot, a little bit of a flare to it. Yeah, I wanted to expand it just a little bit, add a little bit more stability. Especially with that wide lip up there, you know, it could be a little tippy. So now I'm just going to uh, polish out any m marks or lines left on from the graphite. Maybe give it a, just one more flattening, make sure it sits nice and even there. All right. Now heating this up one more time. Boom. It's a pretty sweet looking cup. I like it. You want to have a glass of brandy? It'd be Is pretty it, good in what, that. Do you think it's a brandy cup? What do you think? Yeah, you could use that for a brandy cup, absolutely. Make a little cocktail in there, uh -huh. a little uh, little tropical drink. Well, I want, I want you guys to tell us what you would put in that cup. Absolutely. Why don't you make that in the comments? Let us know what you want to put in that cup. And obviously, we're going to send this to one of you guys. Absolutely. Pop that in the kiln there. Boom. And now, uh... Special treat. <laughs> let's see how attempt number two went. Yeah, so, so this... The first one, you just did a clear one, you know, yeah. to really see how the mold worked. That one actually went pretty yeah. good. It went, the first one went like flawlessly, so I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do a Radicella one next with the black lip wrap. So I was like, yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah. You know, let's go for it. So things started going a, uh, slightly sideways in the Radicello portion yeah. of the demo, you know, getting the outer section ready. Time for a test fit. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this just next week, I think next demo, Kevin and I said that we're going to do a Raticello and kind of show you the details of how to do this uh, a little bit better. But, you know, I, I, I tagged this in there and then that messed up the inner wall. And, and then, then the, yeah, the, the blow tube's blow coming tube off. Broke, broke <laughs> off. It's like, oh, it was a real struggle to get it out. I don't know. You know, I wanted to definitely show you guys that I mess up stuff all the time. And I think one of the things that... Uh, that I've heard is is a master has failed more times than the beginner has tried. Mm, that's good. I like that. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> I can put a list of all of my failures, and when I finally achieve the uh, role of master, <laughs> I'll let you guys know. <laughs> but until then, I'm still gonna fail. <laughs> uh, so you, this is so you actually got your your intersection sealed on there. You're evacuating the air to make the make the reticello double layer there. And you can see it's kind of off center. It's not looking, you know, not but, looking as good as you'd want it. Yeah, because it's a much bigger, thicker radicello section than I normally use for my work. And so I, I didn't quite estimate correctly the, the, the sizes were wrong, putting them together and then blowing them out. I mean, I remember we, should, we looked at the cup after it broke, right? And it was mm. like five millimeters thick or something it like was that. crazy thick in a couple spots and that of course makes it a lot harder to get the glass to move yeah. the way you want it to so you can see the radicello it's not super bad like at this point i was like okay this will work it's not really twisted the way that i want but it's 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 close enough and then i opened it up the other thing that this was the the second time so i thought instead of having a blow tube i'll have a punny but i didn't think that the having the open end blow tube allows me to push it down further so when i pushed it down on the mold the tip of the mold stuck to the bottom and then i couldn't finish shaping it i think that it actually would have worked had i had a blow tube on it because at this point it wasn't that bad 
Right. You it's could just see, not open enough. And not quite on center, but that yeah. also would have been been helped by having a little bit longer section with yeah. the with the blow tube, like we did in the uh, in the actual cup. You can see me. My expression right there was like meh. Right. I don't know if you guys want to rewind for like five seconds. I was like eh, like, not uh, good. And so we, we let it sit for a while, thought yeah. about it, and we're like, all right, let's try and save it. Let's try and close it back up, flip it around, yeah. give it another try. I mean, at this point, we had already decided we were going to do another one tomorrow. I was like, so sorry. I was like, sorry, Kevin, I'm I wasted like, oh, your time. It's good. No, it's, hey, it's, I was saying, you know, this is the only the second demo, I think, yeah. that's ever gone awry out of, you know, 70 or however many. And I, it was the, the dome, the solid color blowout. It, yeah, I think that's in the bloopers. And I, like, literally say, this is going to fall off the, uh, the the holder. And then immediately falls off the holder. Just flattens yeah. right there. Oh, So, you know, you got it opened up on the other side. It's, it's a little yeah. uneven still, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah, you know, right. see what happens at So this the point. wall thickness is uneven at this point, and that's going to be the the end of this thing. You can see it's uneven. Boom, folds right the, there. The fold is really the, yeah. no coming back from yeah. that. No, nah, I was like, no, nah, this is this is an over now. <laughs> like, well, you know, it was worth a shot. Uh, ah, no, nope, forget it. <laughs> no, put that there. That's done. <sighs> but done hey. for the evening. We but, came back and made a great one the next day. Yeah. So. And that's, I think, to answer one of your guys' questions, what do you do to push through a piece? You smile and do it again. Mm -hmm. You can see the cup here, the green energy and the Yoshi, the flat bottom and the hex. Came out really cool. Got those sharp corners. Such a, such a unique uh, shape in glass. It almost makes me want to make a set for the house. That you would know. be cool. Anyway, comment on the video. Let us know what you think. We really appreciate you guys watching, and we're going to be giving this away in the next video. Welcome back, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the demo, learned a tip or a trick, something you can use in your own work. It was really fun making this hexagonal tumbler. I know you guys have been wanting a tumbler, and I've been wanting to use that mold, so it worked it was, out perfectly. It was pretty cool, and uh, it's always fun to see uh, it's kind of the process, how it goes down working with you know something you haven't really used before. And I bet you guys, you know, some of you guys who are DIY guys, you could totally make that that mold. It seems pretty simple um, to weld a couple things together. You could probably even do it out of wood. I don't know. Yeah, right. Make it out of wood, hardwood. Soak it beforehand. Yeah, like you know, a cherry wood. Soak get a lot water. of steam or whatever, yeah. but yeah, it should work. Totally fine. But anyway, yeah, thanks you guys for watching. I really liked it. And of course, comment on the video. This will be for any of you guys. Absolutely. Speaking of comments on the last video, I have some questions for you, Dustin. Cool. Let's see up first here from Woody Skate the Fuck. How do you do picture poles? Quote for small marbles or turf pearls. So yeah. I think he means marini, right? Totally. Yeah, I would say he means marini. Another, you know, word used for that would be millefiori, or you know, picture cane. I've heard mm, that mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we we do have a video. It's called uh, Heart Marini Heart Marini video. I think it's also the it. Italy trip maybe as well. Oh, okay, maybe I actually I, don't remember. Yeah, I think I think so. It's a good video, one of my favorites. So check that out. That's a very simplified way for you to understand how you make it. But imagine a sushi, where if you take a sushi and you slice it, you're going to see a cross section of the sushi. Basically, that's kind of the simple way to explain it. There's the Heart Marini video you can check out. I know on the online school we're going to be doing some exploration with Marini as well. One of my very favorite techniques definitely worth exploring. Totally. And that's all in the classic Italian marini style where you're striping on color. You can also do like a stringer stack marine yeah. where you would pull down stringers and literally stack them up on a picture. Yeah. So I like to use the Franchini method. Uh, it's an Italian sculpting basically. One of my favorite artists is Lauren Stump. Uh, excellent Franchini method artist, just excellent artist all around. Dinah Hewlett was pretty incredible mm -hmm. uh, in her day of making marinis. And then uh, Chris, Chris Judeman yes, from totally. the Stringer Stack, his, I think he's at the top of the game, at least last I checked at Stringer Stack in Marini. So there's a lot of ways to explore this. Definitely let me see what you're making. Hashtag Revere Glass School and, and Kevin and I would love to check it out. Absolutely. All right. Question number two here. Up uh, from Revolted627, actually a couple questions. Uh, first, are the online classes good for beginners? And then I'm going to kind of summarize. Uh, for warming up line tubing, should he put it in the kiln or can he use an annealing flame to warm it up like he would if it was just a piece of clear? Yeah, the first question, yes, the 
the online school is absolutely geared towards beginners and we're moving into some more advanced classes. But the beautiful thing with the online school is that you can watch videos in any order you want. There's certainly uh, probably about 30 videos about basic fundamental techniques. Uh, Maria's, line tubing, simple pipe shapes, all of that stuff's included in the online school plus some more complicated things that we're getting into now with wigwags and colors, photography, mm -hmm. creative blocks, other things like that. And as far as the line tubing, my recommendation would be to heat it up in the kiln, although you definitely can heat it up with just a Bunsen. You have to be extra careful and it, it is prone to cracking. So recommendation in the kiln with some skill and practice and patience possible in a Bunsen. Totally. Very nice. And. Uh... Last question here from Stathoda Glassworks. What was your first torch and have you ever used a knight? Okay. This is great. So, well, I'm gonna answer the question as the first torch that I purchased for uh, the purpose of melting glass or used for the purpose of melting glass. And keep in mind that I grew up in the family with metal and jewelry and fire arts and I was behind the torch making jewelry by the time I was like four years old. So we're not counting any of that. Uh, when I was 18, I, glass pipes had just kind of come on the scene. There, I was going to a lot of dead shows because my friend's mom worked for Accounts Payable at the dead office. So we would go to a lot of shows. We had all these tickets and backstage passes. It was the only place to get glass pipes. This was in the early to mid 90s. And I went and bought a pipe. Uh, it was a hammer pipe, and then I used a map gas propane torch and started to heat up the pipe, which I had probably spent $200 on, to try to melt it and shape it. And of course, you guys can guess what happened. As soon as I took the hot torch and the cold pipe and I put them together, the thing cracked apart. And when it cracked apart, inside was this amazing thing. It was a down stem. And I know it sounds ridiculous to you guys now, but like there was a time when when pipes like didn't weren't bubblers, like, it wasn't a thing. People didn't know what bu the bubblers were. There was bongs and there was pipes, but there wasn't <laughs> bubblers. And so when the pipe cracked open, I was just like, man, I I had been using this pipe as a pipe as a dry piece, and I could have been having a water pipe the whole time. But um, mm. that was my first torch, and shortly after that, I moved on to a um, mid-range burner from a Nortel mid-range mm. burner. Uh, was shortly after that and then after that a uh, Carlisle and after that I switched to GTTs and I have GTTs and Herbert Arnold's in my studio now and to answer the last part of the question have I used a knight which for many of you who might not know a knight is a torch that I would say it's similar to Carlisle in some ways uh, that would be the closest comparison and yes I have used a knight and it worked about the same as a Carlisle. There you go I actually didn't even know what a knight was Dustin had to fill me in. All right, I think we need to give this steamroller away to somebody. It's about I, that time. Yeah, I loved this piece. Fun to make. You guys seem to like it. So, yeah, we're going to give this away to somebody who likes to learn and be calmed and meditate. Absolutely. Thank you to JB. That is going out to you. Just uh, hit me up on Instagram at What's Afoot, and I will uh, send that out to you. Cool. Thank you for watching, JB. Thank you guys all for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you made it all the way to the end, make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Turn on those notifications. And we will be back in two weeks with another demo. Absolutely. We will see you guys then. And make sure to drop a comment down below. Please ask us questions and we'd love to answer them. Thanks, Bye guys. you guys.